two things that are typically thought about as separate things, uh, fitness and physical therapy, two different markets, or that's what people say and think. Uh, seems like it's different things that you need to do for each, different practitioner. So we'll see how similar those markets really are and how technology uh, can help in a similar way for both markets and maybe even how these markets should be joining, combining, etc. Uh, just to begin with, um, how many people here think that if they would work out with a personal trainer every day, they would get fitter? Yeah, right, so that was good. And how many people here ever had a musculoskeletal condition, lower back, you know, knees, almost everybody, and if you would have a physical therapist at your house, every day treating you, would you get any better? Yeah. Probably, right? So here's the first point of similarity. Uh, if we look at the, let me take you now to the physical therapy market. If we look at physical therapy market, first of all, it's huge. The biggest healthcare spend in US is not cancer, it's not diabetes, it's MSK. The number one disability uh, reason in 160 countries is MSK. Lower back, neck, hips, various types of injuries. That is one of the biggest problems in the world today. Problem is that most of um, the three solutions that you have are either eventually go to surgery, nobody wants to do that, back surgery, doesn't sound amazing, doesn't always work, 50% are even not required painkillers, or you need to move in a guided way, right? Physical therapy, basically similar to fitness again, move the right way and enough times and you will get better. Um, but it's very traditional, it's very in-person, it's very brick and mortar, you have to go to the clinic. Kind of reminds you of the fitness industry in some elements, right? Still a very, very, very strong focus on brick and mortar, in person, and not necessarily enough leverage of digital. So two huge markets, quite traditional. Secondly, let's look at the progress in physical therapy. And as you see these nice images pop up, at least the ones that want to, you'll see that it's also quite similar to fitness, right? Where we have been introduced to video, and then various types of connected fitness, and VR and AR and robotics. So while the industry is trying to digitalize, it hasn't really been that successful. And the same thing if we look at connected fitness, with all due respect, right? One of the biggest success uh, stories of the past, you know, five, 10 years, is a bike with a screen showing you a video, which is not all that different than what we had 15 years ago or 20 years ago. So we're not leveraging technology as much as we could for these things. But these two markets are not separate markets, and in fact, if you think about it, they're part of the same process. We should all be working out all our lives, but if we get injured, we should probably do physical therapy. That would be the best solution for that. And many of us that do work out might also have a bad shoulder and maybe some other previous injury. And if we work out too much, we will get injured. If we only do physical therapy, physical therapy and don't work out later, based on what our issues were, then we'll just end up needing physical therapy again in six months or in a year. Think of pro athletes. They live this. They work out hard, practice, play, and do physical therapy with professionals almost on a daily basis. And I think that a lot of what all of us here are trying to do is bring the type of experience, the type of technology, the type of science and expertise that pro athletes get, and bring that 
to everybody, democratizing that. You don't need to have a staff of people, because you can't, right? You don't need to have that many people and that much technology to help you, because with modern technology, we can actually enable that for more and more people. So as I continue, think about this continuum and the fact that these two huge markets, two of the biggest markets, uh, uh, MSK, uh, fitness, should be working together. Now, when we think about the typical physical therapy journey, it's either led by your PT, maybe prescribed by the doctor, right? And they will give you homework or what is called the home exercise protocol. In many cases, you will still get a piece of paper with some images of exercises that you should follow. In some other cases, you'll get videos, or you'll do it yourself, right? Oh, I have a bad shoulder. If it's not too horrible, I'll just go online, try to see what the exercises are, try to follow them. Maybe I'm doing it correctly, maybe I'm not. Am I progressing? Am I actually harming myself? Am I doing it the wrong way? I don't really know. And you have a little bit of technology, uh, things that I think we're putting too much uh, uh, emphasis on, like uh, hyping them too much, you know, ask you some questions, try to understand your profile, give you the best plan, and then have no idea if you're doing it, or if you're doing it right. Sounds familiar to fitness in some extent, right? I go to the gym. Who knows if I'm doing it right or wrong? Come on, right? Because if we're only focused on in-person to provide this, it's gonna be very, very difficult. So again, these two markets, very simple. The current uh, physio home routine, and this is where there is literally customer pain. And you really wanna improve. But, it really is emphasizing in-person treatment, which none of us can do on a daily basis. The adherence rates are actually lower than 9%, and that does not include the people doing it the wrong way. Think about fitness as well, right? You're doing some great program, and you just, that's a lot of time. Right? And you just do the plunk the wrong way, because you want to hold those 60 seconds. And slowly but surely, you're becoming a PT customer. And not for any uh, good reasons. So very few adaptations. You go back to the PT after getting your homework after two weeks, and he or she asks you, ah, that's too bad that you still have that pain. Did you do these exercises? And what are you all going to say, including the 90% who did not do it? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course I did. I didn't exactly get all of them, but yeah, of course I did. Part of it is because you have no guidance. I mean, you stand in front of this video. Am I doing it right? I'm not sure. Am I making any progress? Is this better than two weeks ago? Same for fitness. So much of it is same like Jane Fonda, just on a mobile device. Amazing progress. So, enters computer vision, which is what we deal with, so we deal with, so that's probably what I'm gonna talk about. But think of computer vision in other areas. Think how far we've gone and progressed. Our cars are driving themselves, almost, right? We, ident we log into our phone through computer vision. Computer vision is all over our lives and it's time that it starts getting into health and wellness a lot more because what's more important than actually seeing how well you're doing and combining that with what you're feeling. So combining the subjective with the objective and then leveraging all the knowledge here about, well, if that's the case, then what should be your next exercise? What should be your next plan? Are you making any progress? Should we swap the exercise that we gave you? Do you need to get different medicine, etc.? By seeing what you're actually doing and how well you're doing it. With mature computer vision, you can run on any device. No need for a special camera. No need for an expensive device, and no need to put sensors on your body or wearables that are inaccurate and cumbersome and cost money. 
right? If I take a couple of sensors and put them here and here, and then try to measure my motion, did I put them in the right place? Do I need to now put them in a different place when I change an exercise? Doesn't make a lot of sense. If you have computer vision guidance for both fitness and as you can see here for physical therapy, you can get as close as possible to having a physical therapist or a trainer at home with you. These systems can analyze your motion. They can provide real-time feedback. Are you doing it right or wrong? How well are you doing it? Here's what you should do to improve. Just lower your left shoulder a little bit, right? This level of guidance is doable today literally in 20 seconds. So let me show you a quick demonstration of how this can work. Uh, imagine that I have two herniated discs, which I do, uh, uh, and I got a couple of exercises, some easy exercises to do, and I'll show you what this works like on my very regular laptop, nothing special about it, no special camera, no special technologies in it, and this can run on a phone or a tablet or anything else based on what the PT or the trainer or the doctor or whatever provider wanted me to do so I can feel better. So, swap it to this, perfect, and once I start, you'll see the software analyze my body, my posture, show me the video that I'm supposed to follow, and by the way, I typically have perfect posture, but just for this presentation, I'll try to make a few mistakes. Uh, That's the spot. Now let's start. Side back stretch. Oh, easy. Stand up tall and begin by bending to your left side with one arm overhead. Three. Two, one, go. Bend more to the left. Raise your right arm higher. Try to bend your back more. Switch sides. Okay, and you can see the score changing. Extend your left arm. Try to bend your back more. And I'm getting feedback based on the most important thing. We'll do one more exercise. Swap. Three, two, one, go. Spread your feet more. Okay. Watch my back. Keep your back straight. Now we're going to be good. So even though it's a 2D camera. Try to maintain a slower pace to be more effective. Alright, alright. <laughs> nice. Give me an awesome. Not today. Uh, what's actually happening in the background. So this is just like a demo of what's happening in the background, right? So 44 different points on the body, which means that we're actually increasing that to 75, by the way. But who's counting? And that means that we can support many exercises and very accurately. So we currently support 1,300 plus exercises and variations. And you can use our technology specifically to upload the types of exercises that you all believe in. This is technology. This is not what and how you should be working out. This is helping you make sure that you do it correctly and also providing your provider, right? the data so that they know how well you did it. It's not recording the video, it all runs on your device, the phone, the tablet, and you get this immediate feedback. So let's go back to the presentation. Place your device so that you appear on the screen from head to toe. So when you think of training, exercising, physical therapy uh, with computer vision and AI, you can start by providing a digital assessment. Here's how I feel, but let's see how I can actually perform. 
It could be a range of motion assessment for MSK issues. It could be uh, a functional movement screen. It could be any type of assessments that many of you typically do if you work at a gym, for instance, or you own uh, a gym chain. You do that at the beginning to understand where I am right now. But then as I start using this technology and I start exercising based on the scores that I'm actually getting, based on the mistakes that I'm making, should you give me something easier? Am I getting tired? Then let's stop that plunk before I hurt my lower back. By the way, my two herniated discs, solved just with this work. So, uh, seriously. Um, you can create, I think in the previous session, you mentioned personalization, I think it was you. Um, how can you personalize when 90% of what I'm doing, you don't see and you don't collect the data about it? With Kentai, it could be any type of the workout, any, any style, any, any method, any one of the things that you should be doing to work out or to do physical therapy, but you get the data that enables you to personalize and optimize my next workout, even my next exercise. And by the way, the next time you send me an email, can you relate to what I've actually been, done, been doing? Not just the fact that I clicked play on a video, okay? So, things to take into consideration when you're thinking about computer vision technology, as many data points on the body as possible, that will mean more accuracy, uh, better guidance, more types of exercises that you can support, Pilates, high intensity, yoga, uh, rehab, physical therapy, older people, younger people. By the way, you can upload different styles of videos. We will learn them automatically, as an example. You want it to be pure software, just like your GPS device doesn't run on those boxes in the car anymore, right? You have it on your phone. All this world has to be on your device. And by the way, your device is probably the strongest device that you have at home. Stronger than your TV, for sure. Stronger than whatever mirror uh, device you might have there. So you can do more things with it. Um, we talked about movement cloning. And obviously make it easier uh, to integrate into your platform with APIs, etc. Various use cases, physical therapy, home fitness, corporate wellness, hybrid fitness, anything that's uh, in between and in the middle. And that's it for me. So if there's anything you want to remember, see how I got that logo in both places. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So it, it was a balance between uh, having enough data to really understand how your spine is moving, uh, uh, between that and uh, making the processing too heavy. Uh, and we constantly evolve. So for instance, now that we're adding more points on the body, it is to provide better support for rotations in your joints, right? Uh, some things we infer. For instance, the fact that we understand 3D, even though all of these cameras are 2D. And we do that similar to what the human does. When, If we do a Zoom session, you understand what's behind me, even though it's a 2D image. Uh, the same thing we do with Kentai. Anything else? Interested in lunch? Let's go to lunch. Thank you very much.